If you want to learn a quick way to color a lot of flowers with the woodless watercolor pencils, stay tuned. Hello there everyone, welcome to Creative Coloring with Aram. Today we will be creating this wonderful floral garden and it looks like a lot of work went into it but trust me the only work that went into it was the die cutting. And on this card you can see a variation of color gradation. I've added both pastels and bold colors to show you how to go about getting lighter colored florals as well. I'll be using the build a flower cone flower stamp and die and it has two beautiful flowers. I've stamped several flowers on a 9 by 12 watercolor cardstock and now I'll pour over clear embossing powder and heat set it. I always go for clear embossing powder when I want a softer look. Use white embossing powder if you want your outlines prominent. So I thought I would cut out one flower and show you how to color that. I'm using maple yellow and then switch to orange cream and then I will switch back to maple yellow. And what I'm trying to show you is that uh, try not to press very hard uh, so that as to not uh, chip off the embossing. But later on in the video, I did scribbled quite roughly and none of the embossing chip off. So it must be my lucky day, but I will advise you not to be very rough with this. So the next color I add is crimson. This is a bright red color and on the tip of the flower petals, I will add ruby red. As you can see on the color chart above, the crimson is a bit of a red color a true red color whereas the ruby red has a bit of a pink tint to it so that will add to the variation on the petals so the green that i'm using is moss and another bright green and if you go out of the lines it's all good in fact it's better if you go out of the lines it will cover up the white um, on our images and in that way our card will look more colorful once your image is colored you will use your spray gun and just spread some water on to the image. This will activate the pigment. Now you can leave this as is or use your paintbrush to move the pigment around. You can also use more pigment from the pencils and add to this if you want a bold look to the flower. Mine is already too bold. So I'm going to just um, heat set this and set it aside. Okay, so I was so excited that my flower uh, looked so nice and I colored two of them in such a short time. And I knew that uh, this technique would take very less time. So I decided to show you coloring all the flowers. What I'm doing is that I'm starting from the center as I did with all the flowers and I'm the first flower I'm coloring right now is a very light I'm using light yellow and a very light uh, pink I think uh, it's coral bliss and it is so light so if you want your flower to be pastel or very light color use less pigment or a lighter color pigment or even use your tissue paper to sop up most of the pigment after you add water to it that will also create lighter flowers you will see in a bit as soon as I uh, scribble all the pigment on there I will activate the pigment with water following the same technique as I did with the single flower and on these flowers I'm not using just one color combination I'm just combining everything especially for this um, one flower um, I used all the colors that I had and then I will spray water on my panel if you're worried that your greens will mix in with the pinks or the reds don't worry about it that is why we use embossing powder because the embossing creates walls around um, the image, the, uh, the outlines help contain the pigment and also you can be a little careful if you want to use a tissue paper to sop up most of the pigment as I am doing. Now my light pink flower is quite light as you can see and my other flowers are quite bold. If I want to add more uh, color to the light pink one I will go back in and use the pencils that I used initially to scribble pigment on there and add pigment with a paintbrush. For my background I need a light color wash of uh, green 
So I'm going to use moss and one of the lighter greens. I'm going to first apply moss on uh, to the lower side of uh, the panel. Just going to scribble some pigment as lightly as I can. I don't want to start off very heavily onto the panel because I don't know how much of uh, this I want at the moment because my flowers are so bright. I want a light background. After applying the pigment, I'm going to spritz water onto the panel and then spread it with my paintbrush. Because the panel is still too light, I will use some of the pigment directly from the woodless watercolor pencil. And this is what I was mentioning earlier, to use the pigment directly from the pencil. It still is subtle and light. It's not as bold as most of my backgrounds are. But it will give a base to the floral arrangement that I have in my mind. Once done, I will dry the panel. Then I will stamp my sentiment and then adhere my images with foam tape onto the panel. Then I will add some black controlled splatters with my artist alcohol marker because I don't want to add black paint splatters on my flowers. There's already too much going on there and I don't want to hide that texture from the woodless watercolor pencils. And my card is now complete. How easy was this. You can see the bright florals and the lighter one at the top there. I love this technique especially with woodless watercolor pencils because it leaves a beautiful residue which is so gorgeous in person. It creates a very um, beautiful texture. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you will try this technique. I know a lot of people want to learn ways to use woodless watercolor pencils and I believe this is one of the most easiest ways to use them. Thank you for watching. Bye! Hello there! Did that video just spark your creativity? And do you want more project ideas and inspiration videos too? Well, if you do, please make sure that you subscribe to the Alt New YouTube channel. Also, make sure that you do click that notification bell so you don't miss a video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.